Okay, I think we're good. Well, thank you for joining and coming to my presentation. I hope you get some benefit from this. My purpose for preparing this talk is because of my exposure to some talks that I've heard and some people say things, and I wanted to give some more clarity to make it less confusing for people to understand about the balance of macronutrients in the diet. That means the three macronutrients are fat, carbohydrate, and protein. And I think many people are aware that some people recommend more fat, some people recommend you know low fat as possible, and some people recommend high, you know, it's all same thing with protein and carbohydrates. So I'm trying to give some clarity about what the science really shows in relation to this issue. And I think it'll be helpful. And of course, I'm also suggesting that it's very important for us, how do we decipher when somebody tells us something? Do we just take them at face value because we trust them? Or they sound, you know, so positive or so experienced? I mean, it's very hard for people to know who to believe and what to believe. And I'm saying with so many different and conflicting claims made today, we have to make sure the claim sounds logical, sensible, but also that there's an overwhelming amount of evidence from the scientific literature. And this person has obviously spent time collecting all that evidence that's available and weighing it and presenting how much corroborative evidence for their opinion. So I'm saying that with some of these issues, there is an overwhelming amount of corroborating corroborative evidence and that look at long-term studies and long-term outcomes. And we should be aware of those and to before we make a firm decision to see if something is proven or just a hypothesis. So with that introduction, let's get started. I'm talking here about a nutritarian diet that I coined that term nutritarian to represent a diet that is super healthy, to maximize human lifespan. And I'm also suggesting that a diet that's designed to slow aging and maximize, maximize lifespan, preventing against heart attacks, strokes, and cancer and dementia is also therapeutically effective when applied to disease states like asthma, headaches, lupus, psoriasis, and reverse heart disease and diabetes, of course. So the diet style that should be most beneficial for human health, in most cases, should be most beneficial and most effective to reverse disease. And it starts with this principle of the most proven methodology to slow aging. And I want you to remember these five words that I've you know, mentioned this in prior lectures. So this beginning part of the lecture might be somewhat redundant if you've heard me give this presentation before. But these five words are moderate caloric restriction with micronutrient excellence. Those are the five words. Moderate caloric restriction in the context of micronutrient excellence. And I'm saying here that having a body with low body fat and not overeating calories is an integral or necessary part to be healthy. You can't be healthy and be overweight. There's no such thing as a healthy overweight person because fat cells spew out pro-inflammatory compounds, make you insulin resistant, raise estrogen production, promote angiogenesis, and just have so many factors that shorten our lifespan, including speeding up our metabolism, speeding up the rate at which we age. So there's so we have to be a favorable weight. And we want to have a high concentration of nutrients in our cells. And to have a high concentration of nutrients in our cells, we have to actually consume healthy foods that are nutrient dense. So I'm saying we have to eat foods that have a high nutritional bang per caloric buck and eat more of those foods. We're getting lots of nutrients without exceeding the amount of calories we need to maintain our optimal weight. And how many calories you need versus how many calories I need you can best, deter it's an art and a science to determine that, but you can use your body weight and your body fat as a, as a, a good parameter because we know the longest of people in females occur with body fats below 25% and in males with body fats below 15%. And the optimal lifespan or longevity BMIs are BMIs between 18 and 21 for a female and between 19 and 22 for a male. So mo that classifies more than 90% of our population is being overweight. So we have to be strong, muscular, fit, and lean 
but still take in good nutrient levels. And that's the essential principles of a nutrient, the essential basic principles of a nutritarian diet that are healthy, healthy life expectancy has to do with other factors like pollution and our mental outlook and have positive, have, you know, positive emotions, all these things play a role. But the most important critical factor is the quality of our dietary intake. Very, very important here. So the nutritarian diet is a plant-rich diet designed to optimize micronutrient exposure, paying attention to caloric density of foods to keep calories favorable to max to, to so we can reach our optimal weight and not overconsume calories. The average American is consuming more than 3,000 calories a day. I always say we live on half of what we eat. In other words, half of what we eat meets our needs, and the other half meets the needs of our doctors because of these because of the excess calories shorten lifespan. Well, and while this is a vegetable-based diet, we're trying to achieve a wide variety of plant foods, you know, including whole grains, vegetables, legumes, nuts, and seeds, because enhancing our exposure to different types of nutrients and different types of protective phytochemicals, these bioactive compounds in plants, has been the most um, important scientific discovery in the last 20 years in human nutrition that we can defeat can we can fight cancer and not and, and protect the brain against aging with an, enough phytochemical exposure and i use that acronym g bombs g b o m b s which highlights those six foods that have so much documented evidence to have cancer fighting nutrients within those foods and i mean, just as an encouragement so people eat those foods on a regular basis and those, of course, are green vegetables, including raw vegetables and cooked, including things like lettuce and cruciferous greens like kale and broccoli and bok choy. In other words, green vegetables, beans, onions, scallions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds like flax seeds, chia seeds are highlighted due to the vast amount of research documenting their power to prevent cancer and extend human life. And then since we're moving our diet, to a more plant-based diet and either eliminating or restricting animal products to low levels. I'm going to talk about that in this presentation. Then we have to ask the question, how much evidence is there that a diet that's 100% vegan is more lifespan promoting than one that's 90% vegan or 95% vegan? Or in other words, what's the right ratio here if there is one or if there is science that points at that? And then if your diet is 100% vegan and you decide that's the right that's right for you then is there any are there any nutrients that would be more readily available in animal products that may benefit that may be a benefit to add to a vegan diet and i'm saying yes that when we go to a vegan diet which there's lots of reasons why that we think that's most beneficial today particularly due to the pollution being dumped, the plastics being dumped in the coastal waterways, more than a thousand tons every hour. And we have a agricultural runoff we're gonna talk about of, of algae overgrowth leading contamination of the um, bivalve and shellfish and, and small fish supply. And so we're talking about coastal waterways are contaminated and a likely cause of cancer in Parkinson's dementia syndrome and even ALS. So we are moving towards a more um, um, eco-friendly, planet-friendly, climate-friendly diet. And therefore, it makes sense to look at, is there a benefit to adding B12, zinc, iodine, K2, vitamin D, and EPA, DHA, particularly the big three here we're talking about that are found in, in animal products, particularly seafood, in an amount that's, more, that's beneficial to human longevity more than plants, is B12, zinc, and DHA. Those are the main three nutrients we're talking about are more readily available through seafood that we're concerned about having adequate amounts and maybe supplementing conservatively or intelligently if we're not, getting, if we're not eating seafood. Okay, so that's the, those are the main issues. Now we're gonna take these issues in one at a time in more depth. I'd like to start by saying that, uh, that this has been my... Um, my hobby, my passion, my love, you know, for, you know, for 40, 50 years or 60 years, even since I've been a teenager, you know, now in my seventies and that I've reviewed 
more than 30,000 scientific studies. I spent my life reviewing all the scientific literature. And when I, even in my most recent book, which was mentioned, Eat for Life, I reviewed more than 20,000 references to pick out the 2,000 references that are placed in that book. So my books are heavily referenced. And if you check what's said in the paragraphs, the, ref, the multiple references given to support that are carefully um, recruited so that people can take that information, get the references, and go through the references to feel, to know with confidence that these are supported. So I've been in practice more than 35 years now, with more, also with more than 20,000 patients applying these principles and seeing that routinely and regularly the, re the reversal of diabetes, that if treating uh, many hundreds of people with diabetes, having them reverse their diabetes, go become non-diabetic in a short period of time. It's actually amazing that 75% of diabetics have their diabetes go away within the first month. And maybe even another 90% within the next four or five months, but it's just like incredible how fast the people get well from high blood pressure, that 60% get off their blood pressure medications in the first month. And then the other 30% within the next few months. It's just amazing how fast people get well. And they, so we're talking about the reversal of advanced heart disease, people who are having very, very severe problems, um, reversal and recovery from autoimmune disease like MS and lupus and psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis and ulcerative colitis. And that's been one of my most active parts of my practice in my younger years, in caring for young women with lupus who one woman, one was on the national renal transplant list waiting for a new kidney made a complete recovery. But many, many people who made recoveries from lupus and psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis following these basic principles, but some tweaking of the diet and mod individual modification and customization is, is important because people are sensitive, ab um, negatively sensitized to certain food elements. And sometimes we have to customize the diet to find the tweaks that enable them to make complete recoveries. But, and, and the recovery from simple illnesses that aren't as severe, like allergies and asthma, and seeing people be able to get off their inhalers and get rid from asthma. So I've had a very exciting and rewarding career taking care of more than 20,000 patients over the years and seeing a very high success rate 